स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया talk about another property of harmonic function which is given as analyticity okay so analyticity what does it mean okay first thing first i guess all of you guys know what analytic functions are but still let us just remind ourselves what those are so let's say uh, uh, so this is a small definition okay definition definition of analytic function analytic function okay so let's say f from omega subset of rn to r is said to be analytic at the point x not at the point x not in omega of course if f is infinitely differentiable infinitely differentiable fiable at the point x not and there exist and so uh, let me put it this way and uh, can be represented represented by a convergent power series convergent power series in the neighbor root of x not is this clear so essentially you see uh, it's not on the same infinity function okay of course any analytic function for same infinity is not only same infinity but more it is actually such a function which can be represented using a convergent power series expansion convergent very important power series so you can represent the function let's say if it is analytic at the point x not you take a small neighbor root of x not in that neighbor root you can always represent the function with respect with the help of a convergent power series okay right so that's analytic function so, so what is the difference between infinitely differentiable functions and analytic functions so uh, um, just a small remark okay this is just uh, i mean i am quite sure all of you guys all know this part but still uh, just a reminder so remark there exist infinitely differentiable function infinitely okay differentiable function differentiable functions which are analytic which are which are not analytic okay not analytic okay and for example you can just take this function i am not going to do this but uh, f from r to r let's say okay given by i am not going to prove this thing i mean you guys can do it yourself if you are interested so it's basically exponential 1 by x let's say yeah and x is greater than equals to 0 and 0 if is x negative okay this function i mean you can show that this function this uh, is sorry minus okay you can show that this function is infinitely differentiable okay but uh, it is not analytic so basically uh, one can show one can show that if is infinitely differentiable infinitely differentiable table at zero at zero but not analytic there okay so uh, one can show that so that's the analytic part what uh, and please remember whenever we are saying analytic i mean real analytic very important okay 
because you guys already know that complex analysis is a totally different thing. Complex analytic functions are any holomorphic functions are basically analytic functions. Okay, so you don't have to worry about all these, uh, I mean, technical details in a complex case. In a real case, there are infinity functions which are analytic, which are not analytic. So, for, for example, this one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the property which I was talking about is this. So this is a property of harmonic function. Another property of harmonic function. Now this thing uh, for this course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the proof of this. Yeah. So this is called analyticity. It says that, um, so this is another property. It says that uh, uh, let u is harmonic, harmonic in omega. Okay. Then u is analytic in omega clear so basically what am i saying is this initially you have seen so uh, let me put it in a small note we know that any harmonic function any harmonic function is infinitely differentiable right a harmonic function is infinitely differentiable infinitely differentiable okay okay this we have proved infinitely differentiable now what a, a this property says is it is so what the above says says is it is not only not only infinitely differentiable differentiable but one can represent okay represent any harmonic function any harmonic function as a convergent power series as a convergent power series power series in a neighborhood uh, this is uh, how do i put it in any neighborhood in any neighborhood of x naught containing omega so essentially if it is harmonic you take any point x naught in omega and you take a neighborhood uh, around that point you can represent any harmonic function with respect to a convergent power series expansion clear Okay, so very, very important. It says initially we have seen that harmonic functions are only infinitely differentiable. Here we are saying that it is not only infinitely differentiable, but it is more that you can represent any part of the function, yeah, with respect to, I mean, you can represent it with the help of a convergent power series, yeah. Okay, the proof of this thing will actually, so proof, uh, I mean, we will not do the proof. I'm just uh, giving you some idea. Um, what we need to do is we need to use the estimate, yeah. If you remember the estimate on derivatives, derivative, this we have to use the estimate on derivative and uh, um, with the help of this, we, we want to and plus some Taylor series expansion, okay, Taylor series expansion. So as I have told you earlier, we are not going to prove this particular theorem for this class, okay, for this course. But the thing is, if you are interested in the proof, try to do it yourself. So essentially, it's not a very, very difficult proof. You just have to use the derivative, estimate on derivative and our Taylor series expansion. But I am I am not in any way suggesting that this is going to be a very, very easy proof. It is not a very easy proof. Okay. And I am going to skip this property for now. But the thing is, please remember this thing. Whenever you are talking about a harmonic function, a real harmonic function, they are always analytic. So basically, they are C infinity function and can be represented with respect to a, a convergent power series expansion. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to prove another property of harmonic function, which is called a Harnack inequality. Okay. This is extremely important. This is one of those, you know, star uh, properties. Okay. The, let me put it again like this star properties are huh? very very important property so harnack inequality so what does this say so essentially this actually um, compares the value of a non-negative harmonic function okay 
so essentially why why it is this important so basically we this says that uh, the values of a very very important this one a uh, non negative yes important without this it don't work the value of a non negative harmonic function is comparable comparable okay this is what it says uh, i mean uh, vaguely so whenever you think of harmonic uh, harnack inequality just think of it like this it is saying that if you are giving me a harmonic function yeah i don't care what sort of function is it at least if it is a harmonic function if it is a non negative harmonic function this is very important non negative without this condition it don't work okay if it is a non negative harmonic function then the values of the function on a domain omega okay they are comparable okay so what is the theorem let's just write down the theorem properly so it says that for any for any open connected open and connected set connected set okay uh, v which is contained in omega u there exist there exist a constant c positive such that so of course depending on only on v depending only on v okay so you you fix a v which is compactly contained in omega okay uh, and depending only on v such that such that the supremum of u okay supremum of u over so uh, over v is less than equal the infimum of u over v okay and this holds for all non negative non negative harmonic functions harmonic function u in omega clear okay here there are some particular things which i want you to understand okay uh, the one thing is this whenever i am writing v is contained so some notations which i need to need you to understand is this notation okay so first of all i am saying v is compactly contained in omega what does that mean let's let's just understand that v is compactly contained in omega this is this is means compactly contained compactly contained okay what it says is this it says that so here i'm just writing v you can just take anything you want okay so essentially whenever i'm saying it is compactly contained in omega what i mean by this is v of course v is contained in v bar right that is always true v is contained in a bar this implies v is contained in v bar and that will be contained in omega is this clear this implies this that v is contained in v bar so v bar see this is again whenever we are writing this thing we always assume we always assume assume that v and omega are open is this clear we are always assuming v and omega are open just think about it for 5 seconds huh? uh, what i am trying to say think of omega open v open and v bar is such that v is such that v is contained in v bar of course this is always true but such that v bar is contained in omega okay take 5 seconds think about what i just said so i am quite sure you have more or less some idea now that uh, what exactly does it mean see essentially it means that it will be away from the boundary so essentially what it is saying is uh, the v bar yeah v bar so just think of this as this uh, let's say this is bounded yeah if it is bounded if v is bounded or let's say omega is bounded for now yeah just for example let's say example omega is bounded okay 
example omega is bounded yeah then v bar is closed and bounded closed and bounded yeah that will imply v bar is compact okay so basically it's a compact set which is contained in omega right so there is some distance between this thing so in this case in this case so therefore v is such that is a open set such that such that v bar is contained in omega yeah omega is an open set v bar is a compact set so essentially you can think i mean you do realize that there is a distance between them, those two okay so essentially it is quite comfort v is quite comfortably inside omega you can just think of this as a vaguely uh, this is what it says okay right now let us talk about uh, another small details which we are going to prove here and that is called uh, i mean the small idea which we am going to write it down here so this is called the supremum okay here i am writing sup right here i am writing the supremum and what does this say c here i wrote sup of u and inf of u what does that say let's understand this is the first notation the second notation supremum of a function f yeah so this is basically supremum of f and whenever i write infimum of f it means that it is infimum of f clear yeah? so what is the sup and f uh, sup of f and inf of f sup of f is the supremum of f inf of f is the infimum of f right so once we know this what we are going to do is we are going to start with the proof of this theorem so essentially let's say we start with the proof proof okay let's start with let r be defined as the one fourth times the distance between x and the boundary clear okay so essentially uh, we we are proving the harnack inequality and what we want to do is this. let's say that's your omega okay and uh, x is such that the distance between x and uh, del omega so i am taking r so let's say this is x yeah the distance between x and del omega let's say this is your uh, some the distance between x and the boundary of omega and um, let's say that is the uh, r huh? the one foot distance r now you choose choose x and y in v such that mod x minus y is less than r we can of course do this right so so essentially think of x in the center and you can choose a y which is inside the ball of radius r something like this okay then by mean value theorem what can you say you can say that u of x equals to b x to r okay u of z dz right this is mean value property okay because u is harmonic inside the omega and o v is contained in omega right and does not touch the boundary so it is away from the boundary so this is this and this i can write it like this please uh, try and understand what i am doing hmm? i will explain but uh, for now just try to understand this one p y r u of z dz okay see what am i doing is this this uh, notation i'm just writing it together the integral over the ball that can be written as 1 by alpha n r power n r is 2r here so it is basically 2 power n r power n this i'm writing and here i am dominating this integral integral of bx to r of u by dominating b y r with b x to r integral over b y r with integral over b x to r why i can do this because you see uh, here y of r this is a smaller ball right than b x to r b x to r is a much bigger ball and since b y r is contained in b x to r right if we take x minus y to be less than r of course b y r is contained in b x to r 
right? And uh, this is again contained in V. Of course, this is contained in V, which is again contained in omega, right? So I can do this since this set is bigger. The integral of this set is always getting to be will always dominate this, right? Okay, so that is there. Now this can be written as one by two power n, okay? Integral b y r u of z dz. Yeah, I can always dominate it like this. I mean, just writing this notation like this, and uh, I'm taking the volume inside. Okay, so that is equals to one by two power n. And what is it? This is u of y. Okay, so for any x y, you have u of x. Any x y such that this happens. Uh, uh, in V such that mod x y x minus y less than r. U of x equals is greater than equal one by two to the power n u of y. Right? Yeah. Now interchanging, interchanging x and y. Of course, we can do this. Yeah, there is nothing special about x and y here. So I can write u of y can always be greater than equals to one by two power n u of x. Yeah, hence, hence for all x minus y or so for x y in V such that. Mod x minus y less than r, we have we have one by two power n u of y less than equal u of x, which is less than equal two to the power n u of y. Okay, right? This is always true. Okay, so once this is true, now we are basically done. So now since V is connected. Now here, one thing I am using. Please remember. See, we have assumed that this is a non-negative harmonic function. See, I said it is. It holds for all non-negative harmonic function. Huh? Do you do you know where am I using non-negativity here? This here non-negativity is non-negativity is important. Okay, because otherwise this may not be greater than equal to this. Okay, right. Now since V is connected, this is also important. Huh? Since V is connected and V bar is compact, V bar is compact. Okay, why V bar is compact? Because you remember what am I? Uh, what I said is uh, U is contained. So this is the definition. Huh? V is compactly contained in omega. It means that essentially V is contained in V bar, which is bounded, huh? and is contained in omega, right? V Is contained in a compact set V bar, so it means that uh, I didn't write it. Okay, I didn't write it. Sorry. So we have to write it compactly contained. So basically, compactly contained is V is contained in a V bar which is compact and it is contained in omega. That is called a compactly contained set. Okay. Maybe I can write it here. I, sorry, I did I, somehow I skipped it. So V Is contained is contained in a so omega can be any set, ah huh? doesn't matter. Omega doesn't have to be bounded, but V is contained in an compact set, compact set which is contained in omega. This is what it said. Okay, right now. So since V is connected and V bar is compact, here V is compactly contained in omega. So V bar is compact, right? V bar is compact. Uh, compact set. What we can do? We can actually cover it with a change of. Uh, uh, there are finite cover, right? There are finite cover. Okay. So let's say there exists. We can say there exists finite cover. Cover of balls. Okay. B i. B i. Okay. And uh, this is i equals to one to let's say n, okay, of radius r by two, such that b i intersection b i minus one is non-empty. Of course, we can do that. See, essentially, what am I doing is this. This is why compactly contained is very important. Otherwise, we can't do this. Compact since the See, omega can be anything, right? It can be bounded, it can be unbounded. But whenever I am saying it is, this holds this property. The whole, 
you can compare the values of a harmonic function in a um, v bar it basically says that you just look don't look at the whole domain you just concentrate on a part where it is compact okay concentrate on a compact part v bar and in that part we can do this so that is why since v bar is compact you can have a finite cover right like this that uh, bi intersection bi minus 1 is not equals to c for i equals to 1 to n of course and um, this bi of radius r by 2 that will cover the whole v bar huh? okay so then what happens then if this happens for any x y less than equal here you see for any x y less than equal r we have proved that this sort of property holds right u i greater than equal so u i and u x are comparable yeah so then what you can say is ux is greater than equals to 1 by 2 to the power n n plus 1 because for every every by this is happening okay so ux it will just get 1 by 1 if you just go on 1 by 1 for every x y c x and y if it is here and here y connectedness is required because otherwise you can't connect these two points right now you just take balls overlapping this thing okay do it like this and after that after a finite number of points what will happen is so let's say uh, n capital n is that uh, finite number of points what will happen is you can cover the whole thing down so and for every x y in between these two you have this property that u of x and u of y satisfies this proto property so for any x y in v so for any x y in v okay you can just write ux is greater than equal to 1 by 2 or n plus 1 u of y and simultaneously and and simultaneously and simultaneously the the opposite is also true so u of x to the power n n plus 1 times u of y that is also true okay so once this happens this holds for any x y in v and hence we can say that we can compare x and y so and and hence and hence hence one has that the supremum of v u over v is less than equal some constant times the infimum of u over v clear okay and uh, this c of course depends on depends on v on v so is this clear what am i saying oh, because you see if you take the supremum here supremum of u is always getting going to be dominated by this right okay and then you take uh, the infimum on both sides so that nothing will change so it will remain the supremum of u and that will be less than equal some constant type the infimum of u over v that's all okay so that is why what you are saying is the supremum of u so you cannot be you see this actually gives you so this is a quite uh, uh, so this illustrate this property illustrate the mean value property of harmonic function see what mean value property says is basically uh, in a small ball kind of thing you can actually average out the value of u right that's what it is essentially saying here also it is saying the same thing so basically let's say uh, in a small compact set if at one point u is like an infinity and one point uh, it is very small then the average won't give you the value of u at uh, some other point right you understand what i'm saying for the average thing to work you have to be quite you know homogeneous in its boundary in the neighborhood so that is what it is saying that you can compare u the value of non negative harmonic function okay in a compact set you understand in a compact set you can compare the values of u that's what it says and it is a one of the most important properties of harmonic functions yeah so with this we are going to end this video